Morning guys, it's Saturday morning and just a quick catch up like usual on a Saturday morning. So got lots to share with you today. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my, make my sourdough. Um, I've shown you that video before so I'm not going to go through it all again but here's my starter and uh, I've got loads of it. So we're going to have some discard today. So I'm also going to make for our tea tonight we're going to have um, pizzas. So we're going to make some sourdough pizza bases. That's something a little bit new. So I might share some of that with you a bit later. But the first thing I've got to do is make my loaves. We make four loaves a week here. So I've got to make four loaves to get us through the week. We've got kombucha on the go. Um, I've just edited and uploaded a video. So you've probably already seen that if you follow my channel, our wild garlic video. And today is officially the first day that our goats may be due to kid. So it's 150 days today since we introduced Sid and that's the gestation period for goats. So we're going to be checking on them as well. We've got seedlings to move, bit of planting to do, lots and lots of good stuff to share with you. And depending how time goes, we may or may not take a trip down to my bees. And if we don't go today, we'll be going tomorrow. And chances are when I go down to my bees, I'll be going with a member of my family rather than meeting someone from the association down there, which is going to give me a little bit of a better opportunity to do some filming and show you guys my bees. This week, we've had uh, quite a big vet bill for our dog Sprock. Sprocket here. He came home yesterday. He's still feeling a little bit sorry for himself. He had to be put under a general anaesthetic. Just some uh, issues in his mouth he had to have a couple of teeth taken out he had like a abscess or something anyway he's feeling a little bit sorry for himself aren't you buddy but you've got the fire so he's not that bad i'm going to get on with my sourdough and i'll probably catch up with you guys again next time i uh, make it outside so you probably know the drill by now with the sourdough we're gonna do some kneading now then we leave it to prove for about three hours at which time i get jobs done we come back in, shape it into our loaves, then leave it another three hours. So those two three-hour windows are really my uh, my time to get things done today because that's going to take us up until realistically after four o'clock, at which point I switch over into uh, cooking mode and start cooking dinner for the family. So I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. every time So I've been experimenting to make uh, pizza dough and I don't think I've quite perfected it yet but really basically what I'm doing is kind of like a scaled back version of the process for sourdough insofar as what I'm actually doing with my hands and for the flour and water basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking as you've just seen me do taking some of the, some of the starter and just mixing quite a lot of flour with it no water and uh, making it so that it's almost like a, a traditional bread dough would be. And then uh, what I'm doing is I'm leaving that. So with the bread, if we were making bread, what we would then do is we'd leave that to prove like I'm doing here for three hours, shape it, leave it to prove for another three hours. Well, I don't want that big rise out of my pizza dough, do I? So um, what I'm doing is basically a massively scaled back version of that. So if I was doing it all at room temperature, last time and that worked really well. I left it out for about 35 minutes, shaped my dough and then left it another 30 minutes. 
then put it in the oven. So I'm kind of doing that, but instead of the 30 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm gonna be doing it in the fridge, which is gonna slow everything right down. So it means I'm gonna be able to keep this on a similar time scale to this. So it'll be three hours in the fridge versus three hours on the worktop. And you know, first time doing it, but I'm fairly confident that if it's not perfect, it's gonna be fine, you know, it's gonna be okay. And uh, as I say, I haven't perfected it yet. So, And if I was going to make crackers, then I would just add even more flour so that I could roll this with a rolling pin. It's almost there, but it would stick a little bit. And then roll it out really flat, put that straight in the oven, no proving at all. So that's my process. So that's our sourdough starter fed now. That'll go back in the fridge and that'll be ready for us again next Friday. Just want to uh, share one last thing with you before I leave the worktop here. And that's that my wife's over there bottling kombucha as we speak. So I used to make the kombucha. It's now transferred over to your job, hasn't it, love? Because you don't have enough to do. So we make this every week. Roughly, is that right, every week? Yeah, it's got to be, isn't it? And, uh, would you say five bottles a week or six? Somewhere in between. And we share that with, uh, yeah, we share that with uh, Jackie's parents. So it's one of the things that we, uh, we've got like an ongoing bartering system that does, you know, we don't tally anything up, but before lockdown, we used to cook them a big dinner every Sunday and uh, they'd come over here. Obviously that all stopped with the lockdown and then in return, They'd, uh, you know, they'd look after our kids sometimes or whatever it might be. Um, also, there's some other things that sort of go in one direction or the other. So when they've got surplus eggs, they send them this way sometimes when we've had lulls through the winter. Um, when we're short of firewood, that comes this way. Kombucha goes that way. And uh, yeah, it's just, a, you know, obviously we just, we help each other out as, as best we can. But uh, yeah, those are, those are some sort of ongoing things that always happen regularly. So the next job on our list was to go out and uh, change the splint on Fern's leg, but it's just started raining and we're gonna get rain, just showers, like heavy showers, so it just seems silly. If it was gonna be raining all day, we'd just get on and do it, but it's gonna be heavy showers on and off, so it seems silly to go out there and do it in the showers. So before we go out, my wife has uh, asked me to come and have a look at something. I'm fairly confident I know what it is. Oh, wow. What are they, love? I think they're all silky. They look healthy. New chicks are always cute. Doesn't matter how uh, how often you see them. Same with uh, all the baby animals, aren't they, love? The baby goats, it doesn't matter how often we have baby goats. They're still cute as hell. <laughs> I can't wait to cuddle them. So uh, we're going to have lots of babies this year, hopefully. We're going to have lots of baby chicks we're gonna have baby goats hopefully we're gonna have our first round of piglets this year so exciting times so we're just going out now to redress fern splint so the vet said that we should redo it every week or so so it's not quite been a week but uh it's not quite sitting right on her so we're gonna redo it you can see these rather ominous looking rain clouds above us above us that they're just going to come and go all day all of our kale now has gone to seed so that has crossed the border into animal feed it'll just be a bit bitter and not very pleasant so we're just going to take it off and and redo it and while we're in here i might just check their ligaments because like i say today is potentially day 150 of the pregnancies so we'll, we'll check their ligaments while we're in here if you don't know what i'm talking about there's basically two ligaments that run down the back underneath the tail and uh, you can feel and and basically just before they're about to give birth in the you know 12 hours or so before they give birth they, they loosen up and you can tell a, a really distinct difference and we've had two or three days now where we've had some fairly heavy rain and you can see how quickly this ground is just <sighs> saturated such a shame because already now this bottom paddock which is which was immaculate just a few days ago was started to turn to bog in places but there you go their ligaments are just here and they feel like normal to me 
I think you might be first, because look at your rudders. I'm just going to... It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. She's very reluctant to let me near her back end, so maybe she's already close. I won't pass to you, love. You're all right. I won't pass to you. I don't want to put them under any stress. I, it's far more important that they're happy than it is that I know what's going on, as long as they know what's going on. Yeah, you feel normal. Sorry, love. Some more in here. go. Best we can do for you girl, all right? So I think, even though I can't feel her ligaments because she doesn't want to let me, I think we might be having a baby very soon. And I'm not basing that really on anything physical. I'm just basing it on how she's acting. That she won't let me near her back end or doesn't really want to be around me at all. And that she's staying in there. I think there's a really good chance, maybe even today. So we'll come back out and check on her another couple of times today. But that's Fern's leg all dressed anyway. After today, I think we've got a week or two with no rain, so it should dry up pretty quickly after that. So much to do. Everywhere I look, there's jobs to do. I've got those fence posts leaning up there. Can you see against the fence just over there? So I've got them to build my tree guards around these trees. There's no urgency on that though. I've got weeks and weeks to do that. Which is a little bit easier while the ground's soft, a little bit easier to drive them in. I've got uh, planting to do. We've got seedlings in the house that I need to bring out. We've got, uh, I still haven't got around to putting those rhubarb crowns in that I mentioned before. Uh, so I'll get that done today for sure, if nothing else. And uh, the row covers that you saw me put in last week, we've had some storms and they've got a little bit battered, but they're still functioning. It's just, uh, they're not as pretty as they once were. We've got stuff to bring out of this polytunnel. This polytunnel's full up of pots and bits and bobs. And then we've got the rest of our compost to bring up. We've got compost to put in that polytunnel and also on this little bit of bed just here. And we've got some, uh, my wife's sunflowers have started germinating. That's made her very excited. So we've got lots of seedlings now, all on their way, with more in the house to come out that have germinated. Our leeks have germinated in the house. So I think the actual first job I'll do today, the next job, is to build our compost bins. Remember, I've got a load of uh, pallets here ready to build our compost bin. So I think I might get on with that next. I'm debating in my head whether or not I'm gonna go and have another coffee first. It's just a bit cold and a bit windy and not lovely out here. My wife is being very derisory at the moment, saying that I'm a lovely weather farmer. I only work in the lovely weather. That's not true. It's as much to do with the time of day as it is anything else. I'm still building momentum at the moment. <laughs> so I think I will go and have a coffee and then uh, then I'll go and build those compost bins. Sorry, love. Decaf. Yes, decaf coffee. De I'm still on the decaf. And 
yeah, it's going pretty well actually. I cannot wait for another little spell of weather like we had a few weeks ago. You know, we've got that really lovely early burst of warm weather. It's almost like summer in February. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. But it's, you know, this, it is definitely spring. Look, look at these lovely daffodils we've got popping up all over the place. We've got loads of flowers coming out, including this, what I think is a crocus, or what my wife thinks is a crocus. I'm not a flower guy at all. I know daffodils and I know some wild flowers, but I don't know many, uh, many garden flowers. So I've, uh, I've lost most of the rest of the day. It's now mid afternoon. I've lost it to cooking and just doing stuff in the house with my kids. So um, I've prepared our pizza dough. I've got our um, sourdough out on their second prove. It's now mid afternoon and we're finally going back out and we're gonna go and build those compost bins. And it has not got any warmer. In fact, I think it's got colder. Another reason I didn't make it out is because we've had two or three quite heavy downpours. There are days when I'm, like everybody, like absolutely everybody, you know, there's days when you can't keep me inside and there are most days where I have to be out doing things. And then there are days when I'm not, uh, you know, when you're just not feeling it quite as much. And, I, I, you know, obviously the weather makes a difference to that, but today's just one of those days where I've just struggled to motivate myself a little bit compared to usual. It's not gonna stop me getting things done. I'm just perhaps not gonna get as many things done as I would like, but I'm gonna grab some kit that I need. So I've just grabbed a drill, which is all I'm gonna need, I think, and a claw hammer, which will be in the tractor shed there, the shed that we tidied up. So I'm gonna grab a claw hammer. We're gonna pop our pallet on top of the cart, head on up, start making our pallet compost bins. Quite excited about it actually. What it's going to achieve, it's just going to compact the area within which I'm making compost. It's going to make it a little bit tidier, a little bit uh, more confined. In fact, this crowbar is probably more useful because what I wanted the what I wanted the hammer for was just to take a few slats off a, a pallet if I need to. If I can go to bed tonight having built our compost bins and having planted those rhubarb crowns along with doing Fern's leg earlier and keeping the house running, um, you know, that'll be all right. That'll be a good day. We'll have made some progress. So it's pretty simple. We're just gonna, you know, you've, you've all seen pallet bins before. Just gonna screw them together. We're gonna have a wall of pallets along the back and then one's coming out, coming forwards. I think I've got enough pallets to make three, maybe four. But what I want is a bank of six or seven of them here because we're gonna be producing quite a lot of compost in this area. So I'm not gonna get them all done now, but over time we'll, we'll you know, build up the, the number of, of bins that we have. Once I've got the first one or two built, I can put this compost in them, which is going to free up the space to build the next ones as we work up. Nothing's ever as simple as you first imagine. I've got this bramble here, which is obviously a really, really tough weed to get rid of. And I don't really want it all in the compost pile. So I'm gonna go and get my hedge trimmers and trim them back. It's just literally just started raining lightly. Hopefully it passes quickly and I'll be able to carry on. That's the plan anyway.
run out of pallets, so we'll make it bigger. But that's not a bad start, happy with that. As you can see, we've got one odd sized bay there. Doesn't bother me. Substance over style. And uh, you know, the reason I've just done it on a time lapse and I'm not trying to talk you guys through it is because it is as simple as it looks. Get some pallets, screw them together, you are done. Now I could try and make it more complicated. I could try and explain every last little bit that uh, you know it doesn't need, but it's as simple as it looks. Get some pallets, screw them together. Now, having said that, there's a few things. If the idea of getting some pallets and screwing them together is tricky for you, or if, um, if you're thinking, well, yeah, but what about, there's, there's a few other things you could think about. So I have seen it online. People use the little angle bits of metal angled to screw them together. You could use that if you want. For me, it's simple enough to just screw them together. But if you're not confident doing that, because, you know, occasionally they are, I am having to, to put them in at odd angles to make sure that I'm getting a decent piece of timber to a decent piece of timber. Um, you know, you don't have to use pallets, you can use anything. The thing about pallets is they're designed to be outside, so they're going to last a good while. Now, they're not going to last forever. No wood is. But that's a good thing, you know. We haven't brought anything toxic onto our property to build these. So I'm really happy about that. These ultimately will compost along with the compost in them over a long enough period of time. But we're talking years and years and years. I would expect them to last a minimum of five years, but realistically a decade or more, with a little bit of care. Now, fronts. You can add a front, don't need to add a front. I'm going to add a front over time. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a rail along the bottom, maybe six inches of timber, just along the bottom. And that's just to hold the fronts a little bit more secure. They're, a, they're really secure at the tops, at the back, but obviously at the front, they've got a little bit of movement in them. So I'm gonna put a rail across the front to hold them all in place. Now, what I might do as I top them up is I might add some rails that go up the front and then I'll just unscrew them when I need to get in there. I might build some doors. I don't know, I haven't decided, but ultimately the point is you don't need these things. These things are nice, but you don't need them. Finally, and again, I'm not going to do it, but if you're worried, depending on where you place it, if you're worried about little bits of compost falling out through the gaps, you can wrap the whole thing in chicken wire or something similar. Like I say, I'm not planning on doing that. Now you can see this is where our heap was. And uh, I've just moved stuff that was in the way at the moment because we're actually, I've sourced, as you, you might be aware if you follow the channel, I've sourced some local horse manure that we can get and we can get an almost unlimited amount of it. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, not sure what will happen first, whether I finish my bays, I'm going to want at least another three bays, but we'll see. Once my bays are finished, these will all be topped out with horse manure. Now, here I've moved some compost that is almost finished. You know, it's fairly well rotted. There's a few bigger sticks in there. Um, and over here, we've got really fresh stuff. We only started pouring on there maybe three or four months ago. So it's just sat there for the winter. It's not done anything yet. Um, and there, Again, fairly well rotted, if admittedly it's got some sticks in it, because that was around the outside. We're going to bang some horse manure on there, and by this time next year, by next spring, that'll be ready, it'll be perfect. So, again, I'll just move these into one of the other bays, and all of this, with that horse manure, with the coffee grounds that I'm bringing in, with the, the ash from the fire, with the, the trimmings from around the property, this is going to fill up and just be amazing and, it, and it's going to produce all the compost we need. The reason I need more bays is because I'm going to want maybe two to three tons of compost every year and I want enough to be able to produce that and I think I'm going to be able to. So that's the plan there. Here's my brambles. Obviously I don't want to compost them down because they're just going to take root in the compost pile but luckily we've got an even better way of composting these because we're going to put them through our incredible bramble composting system first. Can't even wait to get it through the fence, look. And these guys are going to turn this into wool, milk, more goats, and then whatever they can't use to make those things, 
going to make compost by way of their manure. So that's a good job done. I'm just going to go and grab the, uh, the bits and bobs I was using. So I've got a drill and a hedge trimmer and the crowbar out here. I'm going to pick all that up, move that down to my next workstation because the next thing I'm going to do is plant those two rhubarb crowns and that will I think probably wrap me up for today because after that it'll be time to go in and cook our pizzas. So we've got a bit of sort of semi wasteland back here behind my grapevines. My grapevines are over my left shoulder and my asparagus are over my right and this is where I'm going to put my rhubarb. Two reasons I think, well one reason but two ways it's going to work. I'm doing it because I think it's going to sort of control weeds in this area. It's going to do that in two different ways. Firstly, it's going to provide some shade cover. Rhubarb gets fairly big once it's established. And the second reason is if I've got a reason to come back here, it'll encourage me to maybe be a little bit more proactive and take care of this area a little bit more. So that's the plan. But, you know, there's so much to do. I'm never going to get it all done. I'm never going to be finished. So maybe, you know, the rhubarb will just have to struggle with the weeds back here and we'll see. You know, it all depends on how things go over the course of the season. They look to be really healthy crowns. I'm just adding some compost to give them a bit of a head start. They've been a bit neglected since I've had them, to be fair. I'm trying to make it up to them. There you go, not the most professional job, but they're in the ground now and they've got a bit of compost, so they've got every chance. And I think they're gonna do just fine. If you look at how much rhubarb they've been producing while they've been in a carrier bag, I think we're gonna be all right. I completely forgot to let you guys know, but you've obviously figured it out by now. We've not seen any kid goats yet, so kid watch will continue. Um, I'll come back out. I'm gonna go in now. Everyone's gonna have dinner. I've made, uh, as you know, sourdough pizza bases. So we're gonna have homemade pizza. And then uh, after tea, at some point, I'll pop back out, check on the goats before I go to bed, and uh, then again in the morning. So. That's gonna wrap me up. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you ever so much for watching. I do genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. And uh, please do make sure you're subscribed, press that like button, leave a comment down below, you know the drill. If you wanted to come and check me out elsewhere, I also have a podcast, the Self-Sufficient Hub podcast. Drops every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So come and check us out there as well, wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs> Both of us working at the same time is a terrible idea. I should have waited. But Sorry. I've no patience. Right. So that's our sourdough. Sid.